Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to another chapter of A Court of Wings and Ruin, written by Sarah J. Moss, read by yours truly, Freewata, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. We're back here today after, of course, little old Tamlin peeked his head around the corner and said, oh, I'm still here, baby. I'm still here. What you gonna do? What you gonna do about that? And, you know, after a long spree of him talking crap, and, ba you know, honestly, I, I feel like the other Fae are kind of like, yeah, you know, Tamlin, you're pretty sketch, dude. And he's like, nuh uh. uh After a certain point of him ragging on Fyra, you know, as much as I've ragged on her, I feel like, and maybe many of us have about her life choices sometimes, um, I'm definitely in her court on this. So I was very happy when Rise used a little bit of extra of his power to make Tamlin shut up. And that's where we'll begin in chapter 45. Only my friends didn't seem surprised. Tamlin's eye were green flame, golden light flickering around him as his magic sought to wrest free from Rison's control. As he tried and tried to speak. If you want proof that we're not scheming with Hybern, Rise said blandly to all of them, consider the fact that it would have been far less time consuming to slice into your minds and make you do my bidding. Only Baron was stupid enough to scoff. Eris was just angling his body in his chair, blocking the path to his mother. Yet, here I am, Bryson went on, not deigning to give Baron a glance of acknowledgement. Here we all are. Absolute silence. Then Tarkin, silent and watchful, cleared his throat. I waited for it. For the blow that would surely doom us. We were thieves who had deceived him. We had come to his house in peace and stolen from him had ripped into their minds to ensure our success. The Tarkin said to me, to Rysand. Despite Varian's unsanctioned warning, a glare at his cousin, who didn't look so much as, he do, didn't so much as look sorry about it. You were the only ones who came to help. The only ones, and yet you asked for nothing in return. Why? Ryza's voice was a bit hoarse as he asked, Isn't that what friends do? Subtle, quiet offer. Tarkin took him in, then me, and the others. I rescind the blood rubies. Let there be no debt between us. Don't expect Amran to return hers, Cassian muttered. She's grown attached to it. I could have sworn a smile tugged on Varian's mouth. But Rise faced Tamlin, whose own mouth remained shut, his eyes still livid, and my mate said to him, I believe you, that you will fight for Perithian. Callius didn't appear so convinced, neither did Helion. Rise loosened his grasp on Tamlin's voice. I only knew because a low snarl slipped from him. But Tamlin made no move to attack, to even speak. War is upon us, Rison declared. I have no interest in wasting energy or arguing amongst ourselves. The better man, male. His restraint... His choice of words, all of it a careful portrayal of reason and power, but Rysand. I knew he meant what he said. Even if Tamlin had been a part of our killing his own family, even if he had played his part in Highburn, for our home, for Prithian, he'd set it aside. A sacrifice that would harm no one but his own soul. But Baron said, You may be inclined to believe him, Rysand, but as someone who shares a border with his court, I'm not so easily swayed, a wry look. Perhaps my errant son can clarify. Pray, where is he? Even Tamlin looked toward us. Toward me. Helping us guard our city, was all I said. Not a lie. Not entirely. Eris snorted and surveyed Nesta, who stared back at him with steel in her face. Pity you didn't bring the other sister. I hear our little brother's mate is quite the beauty. If they knew Elaine was Lucian's mate, it was now another avenue. I realized with no small amount of horror. Another way to strike at the youngest brother they hated so fiercely, so unreasonably. Eris's bargain with us had not included protection of Lucian. 
My mouth went dry. But Moore replied smoothly. You still certainly like to hear yourself talk, Eris. Good to know some things don't change over the centuries. Eris's mouth curled into a smile at the words, the careful game of pretending that they had not seen each other in years. Good to know that after 500 years, you still dress like a slut. One moment, Azrael was seated. The next, he'd blasted through Eris's shield with a flare of blue light and tackled him backward, wood shattering beneath them. Shit! Cassian Spatten was instantly there, and met a wall of blue. Azrael had sealed them in, and as his scarred hands wrapped around Eris's throat, Rai said, Enough! Azrael squeezed, Eris thrashing beneath him, no physical brawling. There had been a rule against that, but Azrael, with whatever power those shadows gave him. Enough! Azrael! Rai's ordered. Perhaps those shadows that now slid and eddied around the Shadow Singer hid him from the wrath of the binding magic. The others made no move to interfere, as if wondering the same. Azrael dug his knee, and all his weight into Eris's gut. He was silent, utterly silent as he ripped the air from Eris's body. Baron's flame struck the blue shield over and over, but the fire skittered off and fizzled out on the water. Any that escaped were torn to shreds by shadows. Call off your overgrown bat, Baron ordered Rise. Rise was enjoying it. Bargain with Eris or no, could have ended it seconds ago. Gave me a glance as if to say so, and an invitation. I rose on surprisingly steady knees, felt all of them tense, Tamlin's gaze like a brand as I walked toward the Shadow Singer, my sparkling gown hissing along the floor behind me as I put a tattooed hand on the hard, near invisible curve of the shield and said, Come, Azrael. Azrael stopped. Eris gasped for air as those scarred hands loosened, as Azrael turned his face toward me. The frozen rage there rooted me to the spot, but beneath it, I could almost see the images that haunted him. The hand more had yanked away, her weeping. The straw faces she had screamed at rise, and now behind us, more was shaking in her chair, pale and shaking. I only offered my hand to Azrael. Come sit beside me. Nesta had already moved her seat and an extra chair appeared beside mine. I didn't let my hand tremble as I kept it extended and waited. Azrael's eyes slid to Eris, the High Lord's son panting beneath him, and the Shadow Singer leaned down to whisper something in his ear that made Eris blanch further. But the shield dropped. The shadows lightened into sunshine. Eron struck, only for his fire to bounce off a hard barrier of my own. I lifted my gaze to the High Lord of Autumn. That's twice now we've handed you your asses. I'd think you'd be sick of humiliation. Helion laughed, but my attention returned to Azrael, who took my still-offered hand and rose. The scars were rough against my fingers, but his skin was like ice. Pure ice. Moore opened her mouth to say something to Azrael, but Cassian put a hand on her bare knee and shook his head. I led the Shadow Singer to an empty chair beside mine, then walked to the table myself to pour him a glass of wine. No one spoke until I offered it to him and sat down. They are my family, I said at the raised brows I received for my waiting on him. Tamlin just shook his head in disgust and finally slid that claw back into his hand. But I met Eris's fuming gaze, my voice as cold as Azrael's face as I said, I don't care for allies in this war. If you insult my friend again, I won't stop him next time. Only Eris knew how far the alliance went. Information that could damn this meeting if either side revealed it. Information that could get him wiped off the earth by his father. Moore was staring and staring at Azrael, who refused to look at her, who refused to do anything but give Eris that death gaze. Eris, wisely, averted his eyes and said, Apologies, Morgan. His father actually gawked at the words, but something like approval shone on the Lady of Autumn's face as her eldest son settled himself once more. Thiessen rubbed his temples. This does not bode well. But Helion smirked at his retinue, crossing an ankle over a knee and flashing those powerful, sleek thighs. Looks like you owe me ten gold marks. Seemed like we weren't the only ones who'd place bets. Even if not one of Helion's entourage answered his mocking smile, 
with one of their own. Helion waved a hand, and the stacks of papers Tamlin had compiled drifted over to him on a phantom wind. With a snap of his fingers, Scar flecked from swordplay. Other stacks appeared before every chair in the room, including my own. Replicush, he said without looking up, as he leafed through the documents. A handy trick for a male whose trove was not in gold, but in knowledge. No one made any move to touch the papers before us. Gillian clicked his tongue. If all of this is true, he announced. Tamlin snarling at the haughty tone. Then I'd suggest two things. First, destroying Highburn's caches of Feybane. We won't last long if they've made them so many versatile weapons. It's worth the risk to destroy them. Gallius arched a brow. How would you suggest we do that? We'll handle it, Tarkin offered. Varian nodded. We owe them for Adriata. Thiessen said, There is no need. We all blinked at him. Even Tamlin, the High Lord of Dawn, just folded his hands in his lap. A master tinker of mine has been waiting for the past several hours. I would like for her to join us now. Before anyone could reply, a high fae female appeared at the edge of the circle. She bowed so quickly that I barely glimpsed more than her light brown skin and long silken black hair. She wore clothes similar, similar to Thiessen's, and yet, her sleeves had been rolled up to the forearms, the tunic unbuttoned to her chest, and her hand. I guessed who she was before she rose. Her right hand was solid gold, mechanical, the way Lucian's was. It clicked and whirred quietly, drawing the eye of every immortal in the room as she faced her high lord. Thiessen smiled, and warm welcome. But her face... I wondered if Amran had modeled her own features after a similar bloodline when she bound herself into her fey body. The sharp chin, round cheeks, and stunning up-tilted eyes. But where Amran's were that unholy silver, this female's was dark as onyx. And unaware, utterly aware of us gawking at her hand. Her arrival, as she said to Thiessen, My lord. Thiessen gestured to the female standing tall before the assembled group. Nuan is one of my most skilled craftspeople. Rise leaned back in his seat, brows rising with recognition at the name and jerked his chin to Beron, to Eris. You might know her as the person responsible for granting your errant son, as you called him, the ability to use his left eye after Amarantha removed it. Nuan nodded once in confirmation, her lips pressing into a thin line as she took in Lucian's family. She didn't so much as turn in Tamlin's direction, and he certainly didn't bother to acknowledge her, regardless of the past binding them, their mutual friend. And what has this to do with the Feybane? Helion demanded. Thiessen's lover seethed at the High Lord of Day's tone, but one glance from Thiessen had the male relaxing. Nuan turned, her dark hair slipping over her shoulder as she studied Helion. She did not seem impressed. Because... I found a solution for it. Thiessen waved a hand. We heard rumors of Feybane being used in this war, used in the attack on your city, Rysand. We thought to look into the issue before it became a deadly weakness for all of us. He nodded to Nuan. Beyond her unparalleled tinkering, she is a skilled al alchemist. Nuan crossed her arms, the sun glinting off her metal hand. Thanks to samples attained after the attack in Valaris, I was able to create an antidote of sorts. How did you get these samples? Cassian demanded. A flush crept over Nuance's cheeks. I heard that rumors and assumed Lucian Vancera would be residing there after what happened. She still didn't look at Tamlin, who remained silent and brooding. I managed to contact him a few days ago, asked him to send samples. He did, and did not tell you. She added quickly to Ryson, because he did not want to raise your hopes, not until I found a solution. No wonder he'd been so eager to head alone into Valaris that day. He'd gone to help us research. I shot a look at Rise. Seems like Lucian can still play the fox. Rise didn't look at me, though his lips twitched and he replied, Indeed. Nuan went on. The mother has provided us with everything we need on this earth. 
So it has been a matter of finding what exactly she gave us in Prithian to combat a material from Highburn, capable of wiping out our powers. Helion shifted with impatience, that glistening white fabric slipping, slipping over his muscled chest. Thiessen read the impatience, too, and said, Duan has been able to quickly create a powder for us to ingest and drink. Food, however you please. It grants immunity from the Feybane. I already have workers in three of my cities manufacturing as much of it as possible to hand out to our unified armies. Even Ryze seemed impressed at the stealth. The unveiling. Surprised you didn't have a grand reveal of your own today. I quipped down the bond. Cruel, beautiful high lady. He purred, eyes twinkling. Parkin asked, But what of physical objects made from Feybane? They possess gauntlets at the battle to smash through shields. He jerked his chin to rise. And when they attacked your own city. Against that, Nuan said, you only have your wits to protect you. She did not break Tarkin's stare, and he straightened, as if surprised she did so. The compound I've made will only protect you, your powers, from being rendered void by the Feybane. Perhaps if you're pierced with a weapon tipped in Feybane, Having the compound in your system will negate its impact. Quiet fell. Baron said, And we are supposed to trust you. The look at Thiessen, then at Nuan. With this substance, we're to blindly ingest. Would you rather face Highburn without any power? Thiessen demanded. My master alchemists and tinkerers are no fools. No, Baron said, frowning. But where did she come from? Who? Are you? The last bit directed at Nuan. I am the high daughter of two Fey from Xi'an, who moved here to give their children a better life. That is what you're demanding to know. Nuan answered tightly. Helion demanded of Baron. What does this have to do with anything? Baron shrugged. If her family is from Xi'an, which I'll have you remember fought for the loyalists, then whose interests does she serve? Helion's amber eyes flashed. Thiessen cut in sharply. I will have you remember, Baron, that my own mother hailed from Xi'an. A large majority of my court did as well. Be careful what you say. Before Baron could hiss a retort, Nuan said to the Lord of High Autumn, her, chi er, Autumn, her chin high, I am a child of Prithian. I was born here on this land as your sons were. Baron's face darkened. Watch your tone. Girl. She doesn't have to watch anything, I cut in. Not when you fling that sort of horseshit at her. I looked to the alchemist. I will take your antidote. Biron rolled his eyes. But Eris said, Father. Biron lifted a brow. You have something to add? Eris didn't flinch, but he seemed to choose his words very, very carefully. I have seen the effects of Feybane. He nodded toward me. It truly renders us unable to tap our power. If it's wielded us against us in war beyond it, if it is, we shall face it. I will not risk my people or family in testing out a theory. It is no theory, Nuan said, that mechanical hand clinking and whirring as it curled into a fist. I would not stand here unless it had been proved without a doubt. A female of pride and hard work, Eris said. I will take it. It was the most decent I'd ever heard him sound. Even more blinked at it. Baron studied his son with a scrutiny that made some small, small part of me wonder if Eris might have grown to be a good male if he'd had a different father. If one still lurked there beneath centuries of poison. Because Eris, what had it been like for him under the mountain? What games had he played? What had he endured? Trapped for 49 years. I doubted he would risk such a thing happening again, even if it set him in opposition to his father. Or perhaps because of that. Iran only said, No, you will not. Though I'm sure your brothers will be sorry to hear it. Indeed, the others seemed rather put out that their first barrier to the throne wasn't about to risk his life in testing Nuon's solution. Rai simply said, Then don't take it. I will. My entire court will, as will my armies. He gave a thankful nod to Nuan. Thiessen did the same, in thanks and dismissal, and the master tinkerer bowed once more and left. 
At least you have armies to give it to, Tamlin said mildly, breaking his roiling silence. A smile at me. Though perhaps that was part of the plan. Disable my force while your own swept in? Or was it just to see my people suffer? A headache was beginning to pound at my right temple. Those claws poked through his knuckles again. Surely you knew that when you turned my forces on me. It would leave my people defenseless against Tyburn. I said nothing, even as I blocked the images from my mind. You've primed my court to fall, Tamlin said with venomous quiet. And it did. Those villages you wanted so badly to help rebuild, they're nothing more than cinders now. I shut out that too. He'd said they'd remained untouched, that Highburn had promised. And while you were making antidotes and casting yourselves as saviors, I've been piecing together my forces, regaining their trust in numbers, trying to gather my people in the east, where Highburn has not yet marched. Nesta said dryly, So you won't be taking the antidote, then. Tamlin ignored her, even as his claws sank into the arm of his chair. But I believed him that he'd moved as many of his people as he could to the eastern edge of the territory. He'd said as much long before I'd returned home. Thiessen cleared his throat and said to Helion, You said you had two suggestions, based on the information you analyzed. Helion shrugged, the sun catching in the embroidered gold thread of his tunic. Indeed, though it seems Tamlin is already ahead of me, the spring court must be evacuated. His amber eyes darted between Tarkin and Baron. Surely your northern neighbors will welcome them. Baron's lip curled. We do not have the resources for such a thing. Right, Vivian said. Because everyone's too busy polishing every jewel in that trove of yours. Baron threw her a glare that had Callius tensing. Wives were in invited as a courtesy, not as consultants. Vivian's sapphire eyes flared as if struck by lightning. If this war goes poorly... We'll be bleeding out right alongside you, so I think damn well we get a say in things. Hybern will do far worse things than kill you, Baron countered coolly, a young pretty thing like you especially. Callius' snarl rippled the water in the reflection pool, echoed by Moore's own growl. Baron smiled a bit. Only three of us were present for the last war, a nod to Rise and Helion, whose face darkened. One does not easily forget what Highburn and the Loyalists did to captured females in their war camps. What they reserved for high faith females who either fought for the humans or had families who did. He put a heavy hand on his wife's too thin arm. Her two sisters bought her time to run when Highburn's forces ambushed their lands. The two ladies did not walk out of that war camp again. Yulian was watching Baron closely, his stare simmering with reproach. The Lady of the Autumn Court kept her focus on the reflection pool. Any trace of color drained from her face. Dagden and Branagh flashed through my mind, along with the corpses of those humans. What they'd done to them before and after they died. We will take your people, Tarkin cut in quietly to Tamlin. Regardless of your involvement with Highburn, your people are innocent. There's plenty of room in my territory. We will take all of them if need be. A curt nod was Tamlin's only acknowledgement and gratitude. Baron said, So the seasonal courts are to become the charnel houses and hostels, while the solar courts remain pristine here in the north? Highburn has focused its efforts on the southern half, Rice said. To be this close to the wall, human lands. At this, Nesta and I exchanged looks. Rise went on. Why bother to go through the northern climes? Through fairy territories on that continent when you could claim the south and use it to go directly to the human lands of the continent? Thiessen asked. And you believe the human armies there will bow to Highburn? Its queen sold us out, Nesta said. She lifted her chin poised as an any emissary for the gift of immortality. The human queens will allow Highburn in to sweep away any resistance. They might very well hand over control of their armies to him. Nesta looked to me to rise. Where do the humans on our island go? We cannot evacuate them to the continent, and with the wall intact, many might rather risk waiting than cross over the wall anyway. The fate of the humans below the wall, Baron cut in, is none of my concern, especially in a spit of land with no queen, no army. It is my concern, I said, 
And the voice that came out of me was not Fyra the Huntress, or Fyra the Curse Breaker, but Fyra the High Lady. Humans are nearly defenseless against our kind. So go waste your own soldiers defending them, Baron said. I will not send my own forces to protect chattel. My blood heated, and I took a breath to cool it, to cool the magic crackling at the insult. It did nothing. If it was this impossible to get all of them ally to ally against Tyburn, you're a coward, I breathed to the High Lord of Autumn. Even Rise tensed. Baron just said, The same should be claimed of you. My stomach churned. I don't need to explain myself to you. No, but perhaps to that girl's family. But they're dead too, aren't they? Butchered and burned to death in their own beds. Funny that you should now seek to defend humans when you were all too happy to offer them up to save yourself. My palms heated, as if twin suns built and swirled beneath them. Easy, Rise purred. He's a cranky old bastard. But I could barely hear the words behind the tangle of images. Claire's mutilated body nailed to the wall, the cinders of the Bedor's house staining the snow like wisps of shadow. The smile of the Ator as it hauled me through those stone halls under the mountain. As my lady said, Rise drawled, she does not need to explain herself to you. Baron leaned back in his chair. Then I suppose I don't need to explain my motivations either. Rise lifted a brow. Your staggering generosity aside, will you be joining our forces? I've not decided yet. Eris went so far as to give his father a look bordering on reproach. From genuine alarm, or for what that refusal might mean for our own covert alliance, I couldn't tell. Armies take time to rise, Cassian said. You don't have the luxury of sitting on your ass. You need to rally your soldiers now. Iran only sneered. I don't take orders from the bastards of lesser fey whores. My heartbeat was so wild that I could hear it in every corner of my body. Feel it pounding in my arms, my gut, but it was nothing compared to the wrath on Cassian's face, or the icy rage on Asriel's and Rises, and the disgust on Moore's. That bastard, Nesta said with utter coolness, through her eyes began to burn, may wind up being the only person standing in the way of Hybern's forces and your people. She didn't so much as look at Cassian as she said it, but he stared at her, as if he'd never seen her before. This argument was pointless, and I didn't care who they were, or who I was, as I said to Biron. Get out, if you're not going to be helpful. At his side, Eris had the wits to actually look worried, but Biron continued to ignore his son's pointed stare and hissed at me. Did you know that while your mate was warming Amparantha's bed, most of our people were locked beneath the mountain? I didn't deign responding. Did you know... That while he had his head between her legs, most of us were fighting to keep our families from becoming the nightly entertainment. I tried to shut out the images. The blinding fury of what had been done. What he'd done to keep Amarantha distracted. The secrets he still kept from shame or disinterest in sharing. I didn't know. Cassian was now trembling two seats down with restraint. And Rice said nothing. Tarkin murmured, That's enough, Baron. Tarkin who had guessed at Rison's sacrifice, his motives. Iran ignored him. And now Rison wants to play hero. Amarantha's whore becomes Hybern's destroyer. But if it goes badly, a cold, cruel smile, will he get on his knees for Hybern, or just spread his... I stopped hearing the words, stopped hearing anything other than my heart, my breathing. Fire exploded out of me, raging, white, hot flame that blasted into Baron, like a lance. And that, my friends, was the end of chapter 45. And holy mo- What is with- uh, This was the least chill peace talk. I guess it wasn't really a peace talk, but I feel like it was supposed to be a peace talk, right? This was the least chill talk I have ever seen in my life. I have ever read, I suppose. And the words that I've seen, the re the words that I've read. Holy moly. I don't even know who's worse right now, Tamlin or Baron. Tamlin was kind of like, you know, he's a doozy in himself, you know. 
and came from like a pretty shysty family. But Biran is the shysty family that has the sons, like Eris would be the Tamlin, if anything. But now we've got to meet the father of the of the Tamlin, kind of. Uh, and, you know, I'm not happy with any of them. Uh, and I'm supposing that Baron will be uh, no more. I'm supposing. <laughs> so, y'all, if you agree as well, let me know in the comments below. Uh, other than that, y'all, stay beautiful, stay hydrated, don't get burnt. And we'll see you in the next chapter.